Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Tuesday Sports Page Tennis Top Star Program. Prince George's Community College is unveiling something the entire family can enjoy this summer. Shannon Cross was on site for the event. Thanks, Chris. I'm here at Prince George's Community College for the grand opening of their brand new tennis courts. The unveiling actually took place with a special ribbon cutting ceremony. The president of Prince George's Community College, Dr. Charlene Dukes, had the honor of cutting the ribbon. What once was an eyesore is now a sea of blue and green, seven pristine courts and two smaller under 10 courts. Dr. Duke says this is just one way the American Express Fresh Courts program is making an impact. What they tried to do is to go into um, urban neighborhoods and really make tennis viable and uh, make uh, young people aware of the benefits of tennis, both as an opportunity for exercise, being outdoors, but most importantly using tennis as an avenue to education and a better quality of life. Brenda Gilmore, president of the Prince George's Tennis and Education Foundation, is responsible for the project. She explains what motivated her to renovate the courts. Actually, I played on the National Wheelchair Tennis Circuit uh, in, in the mid-late 80s and uh, early 90s. I was the first African-American female uh, nationally ranked in wheelchair tennis, so I, I loved the sport since then. And I, then after uh, I retired, I saw and realized what it did for me, uh, being a disabled uh, person, what it did for these, could do for these young people in building their self-esteem and confidence, because that's what it did for me. The weather's great, so if you're interested in playing tennis, they'll be available daily from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. And if you're interested in tennis classes, you can check out the schedule at pgcc.edu. From Prince George's Community College, I'm Shannon Cross. Back to you. Our Shannon Cross, a tennis player in college, I'm sure she'll take advantage of those courts. To high school bas basketball, the county council issued a proclamation today honoring Eleanor Roosevelt for winning the 2014 State 4A Girls Championship. In doing so, the Lady Raiders went undefeated. The Eleanor Roosevelt High School girls basketball team is being recognized as the Class 4A state champions. And whereas the Eleanor Roosevelt High School girls basketball team cruised to a 64-30 win over North Point and celebrated a perfect season with a 26-0 record. Now therefore be it proclaimed by the Prince George's County Council that the Eleanor Roosevelt High School girls basketball team and coach Delton Fuller are congratulated for their achievements and I wish the very best in the future. The County Council also honored Wise High School, who won the school's first ever boys basketball championship. This proclamation reads almost very, very similar to the proclamation read by, by Ms. Turner. Um, and it, most of our proclamations with regard to student athleticism read very similar. But the reality for us is that as a council, we're proud. As a Prince Georgian, I'm proud. What we want you to do is continue to make us proud, not only winning championships, but being great human humanitarians and being great academic achievers. You guys will do that for us, and we'll keep doing things like this for you. Outstanding honors for a pair of teams who won state championships to baseball. The Orioles welcomed in the American League's best team last night, the Detroit Tigers, as they were in time to begin a three-game series that's going to get up to Camden Yards for the action. Steve Clevenger in for the injured Matt Wieters, and he hits this one out to left field, and that's going to stay in the park, but to the wall. J.J. Hardy on first, and he never stops running. He's going to come home to score the run, and the Orioles take a one to nothing lead on Clevenger's double. Later in the game, 2-1 Detroit, Ian Kinsler. That ball is hit a mile. It's gone. His fourth of the year. And just like that, the 2-1 leads doubled to 4-1. to Tigers in control. The very next batter will be Torrey Hunter. This is Bud Norris, and that's off his hip. Torrey Hunter not very happy with that. He's going to make a move toward Norris. Bunch is clear. Norris is ejected, and the Orioles lose this one by a final score of 4-1. to The series will continue tonight. 
from Baltimore at 7.05 to the National League, where the Nationals are coming off a three-game sweep at the hands of the Oakland A's. They continue their West Coast trip last night in Phoenix against the Arizona Diamondbacks to the desert we go. And that's Ian Desmond, and that ball is gone. And that's going to give the Nationals a 4-3 to three lead on that home run. It wouldn't last. A.J. Pollock will come to the plate with going to go out to the opposite field and it's going to be a home run for Pollock a two run shot and that gives the lead back to the Diamondbacks five to four we go to the ninth the Nationals would tie it and then on this one right here a home run and that is going to do it for the Nationals they win it by a final score of six to five that series will continue again from the desert tonight at 940 minor leagues, Bay Sox are in Richmond tonight to take on Patty's favorite team, the Flying Squirrels. Wizards are down 3-1, to one, and they try to stay alive tonight in their Eastern Conference semifinal when they take the court against the Pacers. Tip-off is at 7 o'clock from Indianapolis, and that is your Tuesday Sports Page.